Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, before we begin, uh, just going to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. Um, this webinar is being recorded and you will receive a link to the recording in a follow-up email. Um, you've all joined us today in listen-only mode. Uh, however, you will have the opportunity to submit text questions by typing your questions into the question and answer pane on the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. Uh, we will collect these and address them during the question and answer session at the end of today's presentation. Should you experience any technical difficulties, please let us know in the question and answer box and a member of the organising team will endeavour to help you. Um, in the unlikely event we experience any issues, uh, we will message and restart the webinar. The presentation should last around 30 minutes uh, and then we'll answer any questions that have been submitted. At the end of the webinar, please take a couple of moments, uh, if you please, to complete a short survey where you can raise any further questions or feedback. Uh, just a little on the agenda point, so we'll start off a little about Cambridge Advance Online, who we are and what we do, uh, and then we'll tackle the online experience and how our courses have been designed, and then some background on our course lead and the content of the course, the outcomes the sh uh, that stu students should gain from the course, uh, and what kind of support is, is offered, and then we'll tackle your questions. So first of all, uh, we'd like to introduce you to today's panel. First of all is myself. My name is Philip Perrin, and I'm an enrollment advisor here at Cambridge Advance Online. Uh, we also have Asli Deria, our head of learning design. And lastly, we have Kasha Lenuha. Uh, Kasha is our academic lead for intercultural communication for global business. I'll now move on to what the Cambridge Advanced Online program is in more detail. So Cambridge Advanced Online uh, is designed and created for the professional learner. Our courses are flexible and allow the learner to work around their schedule, whether that is morning, nights or weekends. We have also built the interactive sessions that allow for direct contact with our course leads. Very similar to today's presentation, you can connect with Catcher in a live session to discuss and cover the content with more depth and more interaction. Our courses are designed to have hand-on projects to allow students to work on practical experiences that they can turn around and use on the job right away, or it is a great opportunity to add to your portfolio. We keep the student success top of mind as we offer tons of resources to support the learner, and this will cover in more depth for later on today. And um, keeping in mind the flexibility, we offer quarterly start dates to the learner, so you can choose the best date for your schedule. Uh, we currently have dates upcoming uh, on the June the 13th, and uh, following that on September the 5th. One of the great things about our courses is it comes directly from Cambridge. Upon completion, learners will earn a certificate of achievement directly from the University of Cambridge online and signed directly from the Vice Chancellor. You can post this on your social list uh, it's, uh, or list it on your CV or resume. I'm going to hand over now to, to Kasia to discuss a little about the course and herself uh, and introduce herself. Thanks, Kasia. Thank you very much, Phil. Welcome, everyone. Um, so my name is Kasia Lanoha, and I'm the lead academic for this course. My background is in linguistics. I studied languages with a strong focus on intercultural communication. I'm originally from Poland and have over 20 years of experience of living abroad, including studying and working in Germany and the UK. Um, quite surprisingly, my knowledge of the theory behind culture differences did not prevent me from getting culture shocked many times since I moved countries. And of course, I experienced the so-called reversed culture shock every time I go back to Poland. So it's all work in progress. Um, I live the story I tell. I work as an intercultural trainer and coach at the Cambridge University, but also I'm an entrepreneur running my own consultancy business, working both solo and as an associate. As for the Cambridge University, I am involved in giving talks, lectures and workshops for specific audiences on the topic of intercultural communication. I also support individuals on a one-to-one -one basis by helping them develop agile interpersonal skills, making them more effective across cultures. And with my business hat on, I design and deliver training and coach at all levels of managers involved in international projects. I'm experienced uh, in both in-person and online delivery. Um, 
as you might think, I used to travel a lot to deliver sessions, which is picking up again, but most of my assignments now are online. And therefore, I'm particularly interested in the impact it has on teams, because relationship building is much harder than remotely. Um, I've worked with many international engineering companies, um, including automotive and manufacturing um, with the gas and oil industry and uh, in the pharmaceutical sector. Um, I've also been working um, um, quite a lot with tech startups uh, in Europe. Um, I've also been involved in working with various organizations such as um, HR networks, uh, chambers of commerce, um, the UK Department for International Trade and the National Health Service. So I was very, very excited to be part of this initiative um, to develop Cambridge online courses for a wider audience where I can draw um, on both my academic and corporate experience and create something unique. Um, I really enjoyed making remote learning as effective as possible by, st by using state-of-the-art technology and methodology to create the best possible online mm, environment. And um, the learning outcomes of the course are linked to the needs of people interacting across cultures and, and are the direct result of my experience of both living and working internationally myself and my work as a trainer and coach. Um, culture competence is so much more than the knowledge of the do's and don'ts of doing business in different locations because it's simply impossible to know it all. And to be honest, this knowledge itself does not help much in becoming an effective communicator. And this is why we even reached this program by um, including a coaching development tool that measures the individual preferences of every participant to raise awareness of their existing style and identify possible gaps. Um, so we touch on national differences on one hand um, and also individual differences on the other, which in my humble opinion uh, is key in becoming culturally intelligent. Um, is this course for you? Well, <laughs> it's for graduates and mid-career professionals involved in international business, home and abroad, people managing international teams or perhaps being part of a diverse team, um, or maybe those trying to upskill in the very demanding job market. Um, this course is suitable for both native and non-native speakers of English and those experienced um, and less experienced in working cross cultures. And of course, the diversity of each cohort is the fact uh, is in fact the main asset of the course, since you'll have a unique opportunity to interact with people from a different geographical locations, uh, from different ge geographical locations, or perhaps different time zones, different backgrounds, and with a completely different personal and professional experience to really understand why they communicate, how they communicate, or behave how they behave. Um, it's a safe space to get to know um, and learn to understand others better. In fact, in the current cohort, um, we are currently in week four, uh, by the way, um, I have two participants uh, from the same organization and it's fascinating to hear um, them exchange their perception on different situations at work. Um, it's truly eye-opening to listen to different voices and a real privilege. We don't often have the time to do it. And of course, openness, curiosity and um, listening are all at heart of culture competence. So now I will talk about the practical and professional outcomes of taking the course. Uh, we are going to raise awareness of why ourselves and others um, and other behave in a certain way by looking at both culture and personality. Uh, we will shift perspective from judgment to observation and evaluation, because as we all know, we tend to think that our way of doing things is, is the only and the right way of doing things. And this is simply not the case. Um, we, you will reflect on your past experiences and look for possible causes of culture clash and compare them with this course in the psychometric tool. By doing so, your learning becomes more both relevant and personalized. 
um, you will get to know the different stages of the process of becoming culturally intelligent to understand your experience and relate better to others going through it. Um, people like new employees, um, new team members, perhaps students uh, or, or, or clients, partners, prospects, um, patients. Um, it's really an, any of your counterpart. And the cultures we talk about uh, go beyond, beyond nationality for sure. Um, you will define what knowledge, attitudes and skills you and um, the people in your business or organization um, might need to develop. Um, before I start take it, talking about the modules, let me just mention that uh, we make the learning journey very tangible by introducing a character, Gavin, uh, who's just starting his international adventure and he will be you will be assisting him on the journey and, and learning with him how to become a global leader. So in the introduction module, you will assess the impact of VUCA on today's workplace and the skill sets to address it. So VUCA stands for um, an environment that is um, volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous, VUCA. Uh, you will then define what's culture and, and get to know and critique several uh, cultural models. Uh, you will explain the effect of cultural differences on interactions using dimensions such as um, communication style, um, uh, time, uh, decision-making, uh, trust building, um, hierarchy and so on. Um, you will identify individual and cultural preferences for working practices and demonstrate the use of empathy when evaluating others. And we are back to um, the famous golden rule, you know, treat others how you would like to be treated. It simply does not work across cultures. Um, you will define the culture adaptation process and develop a strategy to foster effective interactions at work. And now you will also assess the opportunities and challenges of using English as an international working language and develop strategies to use it in an effective and inclusive way, both in person and online. And um, you will also apply inclusive teamwork and or leadership skills to successfully complete tasks in a multicultural workplace. And finally, and this is why this course really stands out, you will evaluate and apply experience and knowledge to create a personal development action plan um, based, of course, on everything you've learned in the course and everything you've reflected um, um, and discussed with other participants. Um, and, of course, compared with your personalised um, 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 psychometric tool uh, and the results from it. Now I'm going to hand over to Asli, who will um, talk about your online learning experience. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kasia. That was great to hear. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you again for joining us. Uh, my name is Asa Daria, and I am the head of learning design at Cambridge Advanced Online. Uh, my team of learning designers work with the Cambridge academics like Kasia um, to translate content into an engaging and efficient online format. Um, I just wanted to talk to you a bit about the learning experience we create for um, Cambridge Advanced Online and what to expect once you join the programme. Um, our courses are designed with you, the learner at the centre. Uh, we aim to create learning where we can cater for all stages of the learning cycle. Um, and we also focus on the target audience for the courses who are predominantly adult learners uh, and they typically benefit from active learning. Um, the overall journey considers all of these, so you feel supported by the team and the platform. Um, all our courses are built and hosted in a virtual learning environment called Canvas. Um, Canvas provides a clear platform to navigate and engage with, um, and you can uh, create an effective learning experience. You can see the examples of the course uh, dashboards on the screen, and. Um, this is just a preview to give you a flavor of the course design. Uh, Canvas also allows you to populate your learner, mm -hmm. yeah, learner profile with images, 
uh, bios and your socials, so it enables you to create that co connected cohort experience with your fellow participants. Uh, the majority of the course is asynchronous or self-paced, meaning that you can work through uh, a module in your own schedule within an allotted, allotted time frame. Uh, that's because as professional learners, we know you have a busy schedule and your time is very valuable. Um, each week is released one by one to ensure that everybody is on the same page, but you have the freedom to choose the pace you're going through it depending on your availability in that week. Uh, we also give you an overview of the module contents and any assignments you would come across during the course, so you are uh, well pre prepared in advance. Um, courses are designed to promote active learning, as I said, and applications, so you can apply what you're learning in your own context. Um, this course part in particular follows a story where you're asked to learn, analyze, and discuss the journey of a person, Gavin, as Kasha mentioned. Uh, who is assigned to lead a multinational, multidimensional team. So in the end, you're able to look at your own journey and plan, plan for your development. Um, although you work through most of the course in your own time, um, allowing you the flexibility, you're now, of course, alone. Uh, we have discussion boards and other interactive um, elements in the course to promote social learning with your fellow learners. Uh, we use unique integrations such as Miro, and um, which is an online uh, whiteboarding tool uh, and hypotheses, a social annotation tool to support your learning experience. Um, in addition to all of these, you will have the weekly live sessions with the academics as well, uh, where you will be able to forge further connection with your peers. This leads us into the connected cohort experience. Um, there are up to 30 learners per cohort. Uh, each cohort is led by one tutor. Uh, we wanted to keep the cohort sizes relatively small so you can have meaningful conversations with the academics and your peers as well. You have multiple opportunities to connect, um, such as discussion boards, as I mentioned early on, uh, which will allow you to share and interact with um, tutors and the fellow learners. Uh, each week, there will be a few topics where you can share ideas with your peers. For example, this course, uh, we discuss different cultural dimensions and how to work with people with different styles and so on. So you really have the opportunity to glean into other people's experiences in this area. Um, another way to connect is through Canvas messaging. You can send direct message to others in your course. This comes particularly handy um, in the courses if you have any group activity to do. Uh, which leads me to the activities um, that they are designed to promote discussion um, and collaboration. Uh, so you can share your ideas, your experience and learn from one another. Um, these activities are designed to help build competence and a toolkit to take away with you as well. So when you finish the course, you're also use, able to use your uh, learning in a practical way. Um, and lastly, the weekly live sessions with your tutor and your lead academic with Kasha, uh, which will give you the opportunity to meet and connect with learners and experts in real time. Um, sessions are recorded and made available on Canvas in case if you're not able to attend, um, but want to review the material. So overall, um, our courses provide a clear, supported and connected learning experience uh, that you can readily apply to your own professional content. Um, that's about it. Back to you, Phil. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, yeah, perfect. So uh, really great. Thanks to Catherine and Asli there. Um, just wanted to spend a little bit more time letting you know about the support and benefits available for learners uh, before, during, and after the course takes place. Um, firstly, we've got an extremely helpful and responsive team of enrollment advisors um, to help answer any questions you may have on a course or program. Should you decide to enroll on a course, we also have a dedicated customer service team to assist with the processing of orders and handling payment queries. During the course, expert tutors are on hand to ensure student success. The small cohort size, as we mentioned previously, means that learners have great uh, access to the skills and knowledge of their assigned tutor. Tutors help to facilitate discussions and group activities, including peer review. They also lead the majority of the live sessions that take place. Uh, lastly, we have a dedicated in-house support team who are available to assist with any technical issues that participants may have during the course. They are available via email and phone should any problems arise, for example, if you're unable to log into the learning platform or have difficulty finding where to submit an assignment. Uh, it'd be really great to connect with anyone that's got any further questions or wants to dive deeper into the content of what was covered today. 
uh, you'll see on the screen the link to book an appointment. Uh, this will also be shared in the follow-up email after the webinar, but if you want to take it down, please do so. Only takes a few minutes to schedule a call, uh, and these usually take uh, around 10 to 15 minutes just to go over some of the questions you've got. But uh, if you need to take longer or would like to have a chat more, then uh, we'll be very happy to do so. Uh, or please do connect uh, with us via email, and we'll be very happy to get back to you that way as well. Uh, course enrollment, if you'd be uh, happy to join us or are looking to join us for a later cohort, can all be done online. Uh, we can also accept bank transfers for payments, uh, which wouldn't be done online. Uh, please contact us by email uh, or do get in touch if you've got any questions around this. Um, so that brings us to our questions and uh, hopefully some answers for them as well. Uh, so let's have a quick check and see what we've got. Got a couple of questions in. Um, so let's see what we have here. Uh, so what does the assessment entail? Um, who's going to be best to answer that one? Perhaps Kasia can give you some real good insight uh, into that one. That'd be great. Thanks, Kasia. Um, thank you, Emma, for this question. So it's a couple of things. It's your participation. That's 40%. Of your uh, of your final mark, and um, we are we are what's meant is both um, the self paced content for each week, and completing all the quizzes, but also participation in discussion forums. So we are asking you not only to to um, submit your your own answer, but also to comment on other people's answers, because that's what really, you know, makes a difference interaction. And that's what Asli was talking about um, uh, in terms of, you know, social learning. Um, so that's 40 percent. And then you have the remaining 60 percent for your final assignment. So that's the one I, um, I was talking about earlier, which is your personal development plan. So, again, you will have a deadline for this. Um, and uh, we will ask you to, to just reflect on, on the learning and, and your, your needs. We really want to tailor it to your needs. It, it's got to be relevant. Hence the, the psychometric tool where you have your personalized report, you have the content, and that's, you know, that's the chair in the cake when you can really uh, put it into practice and make it relevant. So that's the assignment. Brilliant. Yeah, no, that's really helpful. Um, thanks, Kasia. And um, another question from, from Emma here, it's uh, what level of experience do I need for this course? Um, I know we briefly mentioned it, but it'd be great to understand uh, also who do you think will most benefit from it in terms of the level of experience they might have? So, yeah, that'd be great. Sure. I mean, we really think that anyone <laughs> can benefit from this course because um, in the current cohort we have participants who've actually lived abroad, are expats or um, moved countries in the past um, and um, are really experienced. And some, they've never moved outside of the UK, for example. Um, but, you know, they, they, they work within a very international um, um, environment and, you know, we also have experiences from just going abroad on holidays. That's also something we can reflect on. So in terms of role and experience of international um, working, we, we're not, we're not draw, drawing a line. In fact, we think it's, it's actually more uh, beneficial to have people with different experiences. Yeah, great. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think it's um, super useful this day and age um, in, in all teams and all experiences. Um, another question just popped up. Uh, let's uh, check how does this course help remote teams across different countries? Is there ever language barrier issues? That was, um, yeah, a really good question uh, in that sense. Um, yeah, and I guess, Kasia, to you again, <laughs> if, if your experience, I suppose, you're, you're coming into contact mostly with the students. It'd be great to, to hear your opinion on that. I mean, yes, of course. And again, thank you, Emma. Uh, absolutely. So we have things uh, that are more technical, such as time zones. And, and, and that's, that's even the challenge we're facing in this course. Some people are joining first, time, first thing in the morning and some have to join at night. And you can see how the energy does not match. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's, that's the real life and that's, that's the real experience. Um, so we, 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 we talk about that and we talk about uh, less technical issues. Of course, you know, language barrier is a barrier, is a challenge, um, but we can certainly um, do things uh, that can help 
especially when we communicate um, on the webcam like now. I mean, not seeing any of you is not very helpful, <laughs> but that's a webinar. But, you know, one, one technique you could use in the meeting is to ask everyone to turn their cameras on. So there's things that are not related to language, uh, but again, good practice um, that we also talk about in this course. So definitely, um, um, you know, every communication done remotely is vulnerable not only across cultures. And I think having people um, looking like little squares on your screen ma makes us think we are all the same. And, you know, because we don't have to jump on a plane anymore, we don't get to experience a different country. It's easier to forget that there are certain things that are not visible anyway, yet, um, let alone on the, on the webcam. So hopefully that's, um, yeah, that answers the question. Uh, right. Thank you, Kasia. Yeah, we've got another question that's popped in. Thank you, Claire. Um, as an English language business trainer, as opposed to a business person, how beneficial would this course be for me to tailor my teaching and training for second language learners? Yeah, really good question. Um, uh, again, it might well come back to Kasia, I think, has probably got the best insight um, to help with that. That would be great. Thank you. Yes, um, thank you, Claire. So, I presume that many of your clients are business people and they are probably working in using English as a sec second language or additional language. And they will be presenting, pitching, selling, communicating across cultures. Um, in this course, we talk about English as a lingua franca and very often in the world of business, we just assume that English is English, you know, one version of it and we somehow deculturalize it. Far from it, right? <laughs> there's British English, there's American English. And even again, I'm, got, I'm going to refer to my current cohort where I have Australians and Americans and Brits. And it's fascinating to just listen to their stories and their culture shock divided. So they are all divided by the common language. So I guess... Uh, as as a language trainer, yeah, it's all valuable to to understand when dealing with your students. Um, um, for you as a trainer, because I think it's going to help you join some dots <laughs> in relationship to dealing with your customers, but also helping them um, being more impactful in English. Brilliant. No, I think that's really helpful, Kasia. I, I hope that's been helpful, Claire, as well, to, to understand a little bit more. Uh, yeah, she just added, most of my work now is intercultural from a linguist perspective. Excuse me. Yeah. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks, Claire. That's brilliant. Um, yeah, that, that's the list of our questions at the moment. If anybody else does have any questions, please feel free to pop that into the pane um, as soon as you are able, and we'll be happy to help with any questions. But um, Otherwise, we'll, we'll look to, to wrap things up. Um, give it a moment in case anybody pops something in. Okay. <laughs> well, um, I, I think then perhaps we'll, we'll start wrapping things up, but by all means, if any further questions come up, then uh, do get in touch either by, uh, by email or, or feel free to book a call. Uh, as I say, do keep an eye out for a follow-up email from us. But um, a big thank you from all, all of us here to, to, for joining today. Uh, apologies uh, if we haven't had time to answer your questions, but um, uh, we, we certainly still have some time if, if you do have anything. Um, if you do, as I said, do drop us an email. Uh, there will be a short survey when you exit the webinar today. Uh, it'd be really great to get your, your feedback uh, or, as I say, if any other questions come up, then please do pop that in there. Um, please do take a couple of moments. Uh, and then look out for that follow-up email later this week, uh, in which we'll share a recording of this webinar and, um, and some further useful links that have been mentioned today. And um, yeah, thank you again from all of us.